it up, give it up. We are so excited here at the Connected Corner. I'm your girl, Tori Rose. And who do I have the honor of being here with tonight? Uh, it's your girl, Kiana B. Jones. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Hey, Happy girl. Tuesday. Happy I hope everybody is having a terrific Tuesday out there. I'm corny. I put, you know, some type of descriptive uh, with every day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Tuesday. <laughs> no. uh, wacky yeah. Waffle Wednesday. What have you I eaten today? Did you have good food today? Um, did I eat today? Um, mm. oh, I did. I had, uh, I had some grapes, I apples, I ate some fruit. Um, okay. Terrific. Blue, fruit. Yeah, muffin. And then I had like three little Parmesan garlic wings for like a snack. So I haven't had like a whole entire meal yet today. Oh. Um, so I just kind of been snacking like tiny meals, not even small. <laughs> <laughs> Minuscule meals. Guys, drop in the comments. Let us know what you've eaten today. Has COVID changed your appetite? Um, are you apathetic towards food? Right. And so it's funny that you said that because um today's show, we're gonna be talking about the aspirations or apathy, the effects of COVID on education. But if we're honest, COVID has affected everything, right? And so I know for me, I forced myself after my smoothie this morning, between meetings, Zoom on one call, Teams on the other, I made steak and eggs and oh, this look at you. for breakfast this hmm. morning. And then we had, um, we had um, like grilled fish. It's a type of um, mm -hmm. catfish. It's like a cousin to a catfish. So we had a grilled fish and string beans and rice for like a lunch dinner, Leonard, Leonard, hashtag Leonard. <laughs> That's not a real word. <laughs> hashtag Leonard. So do you think you've eaten um, better or worse since COVID? Hey, Ryan. Hey, T-Rose Tuesdays. I love that. And then we would have to keep it silly Saturdays for Kiana B. Jones. Um, how about you, Kiana? Do you think that COVID has affected how you are eating and sleeping and doing everything? I think, um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I definitely agree that it has. Um, I know in the beginning, um, I did put on, you know, how they used to have the, what was the freshman 15? Yes. Uh, I don't know. I put on like COVID 30. <laughs> <laughs> COVID 19, 19. That's what it is. <laughs> right. COVID 19. Yeah, I put on COVID. 19 plus 19 like I love it. I love it. <laughs> but um I am back down to my pre-covid, thank goodness. Um awesome. yeah, it was it was I was like I can't do this. Um yeah. so started taking better care, working out. I think we just, you know, everybody it's it's an adjustment for how we all live, what we all do. Um I mean, it's my first pandemic. I have I my not. first pandemic I have lived with he lived through mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. you know so yeah it's it's been an adjustment and it's interesting you say that because i know we also subscribe to the theory that hiv and aids is a pandemic right and mm -hmm. so we don't at all take for granted that there has been a pandemic of hiv and aids so for anybody that's listening any viewers we right. do recognize that that is also um, been a global pandemic and so yeah. i think the difference is um because of the sexual nature, things have been demonized for so long, right? Mm -hmm. If you can have HIV or AIDS for years, it was seen as a homosexual only issue and things like that. Whereas this is right. a respiratory uh, virus that's affecting everybody, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Young people yep. in between. So we don't want to take for granted that we have lived through the pandemic of HIV and AIDS. And we know that science is still moving forward to find a cure and even possibly a vaccine. But this pandemic of Corona, why y'all had to go mess with Rona? Rona sound like the aunt when you downstairs playing and it's like, don't wake my aunt up. And she come to the top of the steps like, what y'all doing down there? Rona. We woke up Rona. <laughs> and as a fact, everybody is feeling uninspired and a little apathetic. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. But before we do, 
Kiana, tell us how people can get connected to the Connected Corner. How can they find you can us? get connected to the Connected Corner, and you can find us on Facebook at the Connected Corner, and Instagram at the Connected Corner, and YouTube. YouTube. At the Connected Corner. So when you go to Connected Corner on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Go ahead, Tori. Tell them what to do. How to, how to subscribe. <laughs> so we love doing this because they're YouTubers, the million follower YouTubers. They be like, smash it, hit the pal, pop it, hit the like, love it. Love subscribe, it. guys. Right there. Hit the button it. below. Hit it. This button below. Hit it. Smash it. <laughs> it's our little infomercial. It's our infomercial. Like, so just comment like, below. Tell us how yeah. you love the show. Comment, comment. And if you didn't like it, oh wow. We'll still see you next Tuesday. It was like, yo, YouTubers. <laughs> There's actually like YouTube University, which I find is extremely interesting. They have their own dialogue. There is um there's acronyms and language that is specific to the culture. And so I think it's very um it is interesting for those of us that refuse to move forward with the technological times because people are going to be talking about things. We're like, F-M-O-L-O. -O. What's a FOLO? Like, what's a FOMOLO? What's a FML? First of all, I didn't know what FML meant. I said, you mean A? F-M-L-A? <laughs> because the human resource professional that I am knew nothing about FML. It, it means um, fudge my life, in case anybody wants to know what that means. Did you put yourself on mute, Kiana B. Jones? Did you go smash like and... I go. did. <laughs> I smashed it like, I smashed it like too many things. <laughs> this is the connected corner where you get new resources that you actually use. And, we'll and virtual bloopers. <laughs> and bloopers. <laughs> and so we are excited. Um, we want to give a couple of shout outs to a few um, amazing individuals in the community doing the darn thing. So to the Catherine's Youth, uh, I'm sorry, Catherine's Youth Foundation. Mm -hmm. I think I said that right. Y'all got to forgive me. It'd be late. I get up real Isn't early. it family in it? I think it's Catherine. Family. Catherine's Youth Family Services. Valerie yeah. Matthews. We'll put your correct name in the, in the <laughs> comments. Forgive me, girl. My bad. She's getting old. And then to Michael Foy, who just started um, Emily's Foundation. I believe that's the correct mm -hmm. name. We want to give them a shout out and just acknowledge what they are doing. Um, to everyone in Baltimore City's um, City Council and delegation who have been uh, inducted officially into their new positions, we say welcome. And we will be holding y'all accountable. Accountable and, and accounted for. Uh, yeah. Accounted for. <laughs> you said here in subsection six of your campaign plan that there will be no rats on North Avenue. Oh my goodness. Five rats on North Avenue. <laughs> Accounted for. <laughs> That's silly. You are mm -hmm. silly girl. Oh my goodness. So. Yeah, it's been a um, it's been a, a, a interesting so far year. I cannot believe that we are already in December. We are in the last month of the year, the last quarter of the year, all of those wonderful things. And so, you know, hopefully, people are, um, you know, kind of getting ready for what's going to be a better twenty twenty one. Yeah, um, feeling inspired so we had, or feeling apathetic, right? Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about that tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that um, it's definitely a good topic to kind of talk about as we round out, you know, 2020, where mm -hmm. people are feeling, um, you know, typically in the education world, we were, we would be ending, you know, second quarter, the kids would mm -hmm. be excited about winter break. Um, you know, it's that time to get rejuvenated to come back for, for third quarter. And so I'm sure things are looking a little different and feeling a little different right now. And so we want to, you know, we're going to talk about that tonight. And we have a, a wonderful guest with us. And so, guys, we do not have to call in tonight. However, you can 
um, comment, you can share, you can host a uh, watch party. Um, if when you comment, we will share, we can share your comments across the screen. And so you wanna make sure you comment, join the conversation and we'll share um, your comments uh, with our viewers on the screen. So in lieu of calling in, comment below, like, share, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Smash that button. Hit the button below. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really quickly before we introduce the um, the guest, I can't wait to hear from him. We, um, I wanted to share this little meme. I realized that there's these memes out here and I don't know about you guys, but I have been quarantined for so long that I've become a teenager. And so it's like the Benjamin button, I'm going backwards. And so this meme from the fly wire, hey Marcy girl, it was hilarious. She said, nobody claimed 2021 as their year. We are gonna be good, walk in real quiet and don't touch nothing, go sit down. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. I thought it was funny. So, as you talk about <laughs> us moving into the next year, maybe uh, Mr. Rodden can tell us a little bit about what should we do and how should we prepare ourselves, especially in the world of education during this here COVID time. Yeah, yeah, most certainly. And so, without further ado, we want to bring on our wonderful guest tonight that we have with us. And we have a world renowned international speaker, I Ooh. mean, just awesome guy, educator, advocate, author. I mean, the list goes on. You guys got to check out his website. We're going to drop it down, but just an amazing person. I felt like just kind of going through the bio and reading, I'm like, well, I still got more to do. <laughs> Looking at what this guy been doing, I still have more to do. So without further ado, Mr. Rodney C. Barris, welcome to the Connected Corner. What's going on, people? Um, hey, thank, you thank you for having me. Um, I, all that stuff on my bio, uh, I made it up. I just Googled somebody's stuff. <laughs> nah, um, yeah, all of that stuff happened to me and my mom, my two little sisters, uh, my dad, respects to him. Um, he and I had to have a talk about 10 years ago because I found myself telling our story in a lot of different places. Um, some of them were were outside of Baltimore, but a lot of them were here where we are. And I was like, Dad, how you feel about that? You know, because mm -hmm. got some bruises in there. You know what I mean? There's some, yeah. some bruises in it. Um, and he was like, that was a part of life. And as long as you are helping people do different and better. He was like, you know, I'm, I'm down for it. So um, I appreciate his permission because Lord knows I was just sharing it. Like I was all over the place because I saw the reaction. Like I saw people vibing and connecting and being, and I've learned Kiana, like how to, um, and Tori. Tori, the last time I saw you, we were celebrating Devin Walker's video documentary at the rec center. Um, I remember that. Your hostess with the mostest tip. <laughs> um, but uh, beautiful co-hosts, Beehive ladies, what what um, I've learned how to tell my story and use big parenthetical statements and, you know, 13 letter words and talk real hood, hood, you know, like from round way and um, for my educated folks. So, you know, throwing some scriptures in there or like whatever it is to so it's the same content but I might dress it up and I might add a cherry on top. I might do some different things in order to deliver it, to present it. And I was doing that so much. And then I had to loop back to my dad, like, you okay with that? Cause there's some, um, yeah. there's some bumps in there, but I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to still be here and be more. I love mm -hmm. our city, um, mm -hmm. our city has bruises, but it has a lot of beauty and potential. Um, that's why I respect what you ladies are doing. I don't even know how I stumbled across this podcast, but when I did, I was like, they trying to big up the city and I'm yeah. all about that. So thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Yes, I do remember that. We had a good time supporting Devin. I was honored and many of us to be in that um, production. Um, and to your point about your dad, I have shared some very um, transparent and real things about my mother. 
Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because I've had people who have actually been in conferences, much like you have spoken all everywhere, yeah. you know, um, even now with COVID, you know, still have an opportunity to, to motivate and to engage virtually. Uh-huh. But it was at a, a conference. I think we were at the um, Martin's West. OK. And my mother was there. Uh-huh. And you can imagine three, four hundred women in a room hearing me share my story. And then go on, but wait, didn't she just acknowledge mm-hmm. her mother in the room, right? Right, isn't that her mom? Right, right. And I remember having someone walk up and say to my mother, had you not been here mm. and had you not been in agreement with right, her, you right, right. would not have believed it. Right. And so it is so imperative for us to remember that when we are sharing our truths mm-hmm. and our story and we're reliving mm-hmm. In the the sense or with the intention of healing, because yeah. it's not about just being messy and telling everybody your business. It's about, you know, sharing your healing process and delivering other people. But when we right. are telling our stories, we're also telling other people's stories. We also tell other, people's, other people. people's truths and other people's dirt. And so I love that you started there. I love that you've yeah. talked to your father and acknowledged and gotten his blessing and, yeah. you know. Um, I share about being homeless at 16. Well, guess what? I'm homeless. Home with Tori? Yeah, but but I'm almost 40, right? Yeah. So when I had to explain to people, that was 20 plus years ago, right? 20 years ago. And so, no, things don't look the same. My mother's yeah. not the same person, you know? And so there's a human aspect to that. So welcome, welcome thank back. You. Good to be reconnected to you. Thank, thank you so thank much you, for being here. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. I was in this whole office building by myself. It seems that other people are trying to work late like me too and just came in here. So if you guys hear any background noise, I will close my door. I don't want to get up at the moment if you don't hear it. But if you do, you hear people talking or moving, I'll close the door. Just let me know, please. No worries. We'll just talk about you later. Like, girl. (laughs) All the people. So far, we hear just a little, but I'm okay. Are you okay with it? So far? Yeah, I did. So far. I'm going to close my door. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Awesome. So while Rodney is doing that again, yes, we want to just acknowledge (laughs) you guys follow us, share this if you're watching us. Even if you're watching on the replay, drop um, a question that you may have for this international speaker, author, and advocate, and we'll be sure to come back and either we'll answer or we'll have him answer. So catch us on the replay. If you're catching it, still put your comments below. So, Key, I'm going I'm to pass it to you because you always ask some really good questions. What is our first <laughs> question tonight for Mr. Burns? And it's not, it's a candy. I, you know, that's the first thing that I, um, I was like, oh, I should ask them to say related to Candy Burns. <laughs> I know you well. No, thank you. I got a whole well, bunch yeah. of gadgets from Cousin Candy. No. <laughs> <laughs> different, that's a different candy. Well, I'm a different candy. Well, I'm a Devices. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna just sip my water on that one. Yeah, and you know, us single women's honey, don't talk about this. <laughs> one thing. It's like if I get one more package, they're gonna think I'm trying. No, no. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so, um, you know, I know when you're um, being a youth advocate and having worked, you know, throughout many different school systems, if you have yeah. Baltimore City and beyond, um, what are some of the things and feedback? Like, you know, uh, we thought it is topic to say, you know, this would be great to yeah. kind of delve in with you, not only being a motivational speaker, yeah. but, you know, educator, like our kids need some motivation right now, you know, yeah. talking to nieces and nephews and all of that with the internet, um, mm-hmm. you know, virtual learning. Um, what is the feedback and what are some some things that you are getting in reference yeah. to that? So um, Kiana, Kiana's question makes me think about like holding like a big like bucket in front of you. Right. So if you hold a bucket in front of you and people are supposed to put good in it, education, mentorship, instruction. But if that bucket is full. It doesn't matter how good the thing I'm trying to put in it is. There's no space, right? And so it's like a baby. Like you give a baby too much, the baby's spitting up and dribbling and all this other kind of stuff because you don't you don't overfill what it is. And a lot of students that I've seen from collegiate level on down through elementary, 
they have also been living through a crisis. But because ain't nobody sick, because, you know, it doesn't look that the crisis hasn't manifested for them on the outside or, or medically, a lot of times, like, space to empty that bucket, it's not allowed. It's not that we don't think it's important. It's like we don't even think, right? The cliche is the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So it's four wheels on that wagon, right? But if I'm going to stop and put my bag down and go get the oil and come back to the wagon, and I'm going to do the one that's making a noise so I can get back to it. I ain't about to just sit here and squeak, oh, all y'all fine, let's go, right? And so what happens is we have like this silent segment of the population that's school age that some of them, not all of them, but some of them haven't had the opportunity. And I'm speaking about this from firsthand. So um, Tori, you didn't hear me say this because I always talk real bad because I don't got good home training. So, um, my, uh, so my wife has a lot of kids. Like this lady, she needs a hobby. Like she, I'm, look, she got to, but okay, so there are kids, but that's not, that's irrelevant. That's not the point. It's not the, it don't, she got a lot of kids. She That's not the point. She got the kids. Got the kids. Got I'm like, miss, ma'am. But okay, so I say that to say, um, I got kids almost, I got, we got five children. I got kids in like three or four city schools. And I have seen different ones of them. So I'm thinking about my son that's at Baltimore Collegiate School for Boys, right? City school. But it's one of them five-year-old charter schools doing really well. Um, this dude just checked out. Now he was threatening that. He was like, Dad, I ain't I man, I ain't about to do no more work. I'm like, okay, boy, yeah, okay, okay. Right? Not thinking about nothing of it. This is like August, September, or something like that, September. Somewhere towards the end of September through up until like last week or so, he just stopped logging on. He wasn't getting on Zoom, he wasn't doing nothing. He was so unhappy, mad, disgruntled, like whatever nice little big little word we want to put on it, he ain't start drinking, he ain't start fighting and cussing. So because he's not fighting and cussing, because he ain't hitting nobody upside the head with no bottle, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the reaction at first was, why are you not doing why? And I, I'm so thankful, Kiana, I'm so thankful, Tori. And Tori, I didn't see you do like other different little things. So I know sometimes you be talking about the good Lord. So I'm gonna feel a little comfortable talking about the good Lord real quick. Oh, absolutely. But I can't say that this literally happened. So just kind of go with my little imagination. If I could say this, it's almost like I got tapped on the shoulder, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't you run your mouth trying to tell people, parents, educators about paying attention to other signals and symptoms. It's not the normal. Um, just because they're not violent or loud or whatever, don't mean that they ain't been trauma. So what is your son really saying? This is hard. Yeah. This is hard. My life is inside mm -hmm. of this bedroom. My life exists between the dining room, the kitchen, and the bedroom, in the hallway for months, through the summer, through like, but because you ain't cussing, because you ain't sneaking out to the liquor store, you're fine. And so what I encourage us to do, all of us, right, that's kind of sharing and holding hands in this whole thing is to take a moment to help our young folks. And any listen, anybody can fit into that category, young folk. Mm -hmm. It could be literally kids or children. It could be people that's the same age as you or older than you, right? But people that's like we feel a heart for. If we could figure out ways to help them unpack that bucket, to dump some of that out. Because if we only trying to give them good, more, more, good, more, it's not gonna be no space for it. So yeah, so let me let me interject for one second because I, I know some people are coming in. I wanna make sure that they are hearing and, and seeing visually what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our kids are overloaded. Our kids are spilling over. Yeah. And it does not matter. I, you know, I had a parent say to me, well, this little bit of work that, you know, he or she is getting, I'm going to say he or she because she might be watching. And if she is, girl, subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Connected Corner. Thank you so much. But he he or she is getting this little bit of work. It's not about getting work, completing the work and putting a check in this 
right. this box, this proverbial box. Right. Is your child learning the context of the, of this work? Did they get the foundational understanding? Right. Hey, how about the fact that your child was a social butterfly last right. year? Right. They have completely lost that social element. What about the fact that your child sits in the front of the classroom, maybe anti-social, but right. needs that one-on-one interaction right. and that 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 feeling of right. comfort that my teacher is right there? And guess what? I think it was Michael Gary who said to me just the other day, or maybe we were even in a training, met Michael Gary to con- uh, at Concentric. So shout out to them mm-hmm. and the work that they're doing during this pandemic as well. But he said he has a niece, I believe, who is an extreme introvert. Oh, wow. She sits in the front of the classroom. The classroom model is set up so that even if the, the children are looking in her direction, they're not looking at her, right? Oh, Everybody's right, looking right, forward. Right. But you can't see who's looking at you. Right. Whereas on Zoom, as soon as you start to talk, you're yeah. the speaker, right. the speaker of view. Everyone's looking at you. That's and so I had to say to this parent, I said, I need you to figure out what makes more sense. Does it make sense to have a child who comes out of this pandemic whole, Mm. healthy, Mm. trusting you? Because I'm gonna tell you parents, we're missing the fact that our children are losing trust in us. We walk out of the rooms, we go to work. Some of us are working virtually as well. We leave them to do whatever it is and they are losing trust in us. Why are you not advocating? You're the same parent that used to be up to school with your bonnet on. But in this, you're not advocating for me. So I wanted to just kind of come back and let people hear what it is that you are saying. You can't put what's so much in the bucket without it overflowing. And it's not as simple as, well, he only got one assignment per each class per because the pressures of working day in and day out from this virtual environment where they were unprepared. Let's just say that. And it's, it's, and it's, I I mean, just when you're talking about that proverbial bucket, just thinking about um, having been in a classroom and instruction, and I just had this conversation the other day, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm the auntie. So I got nieces and nephews, sisters, cousins, you know, when you've been that teacher, educator in or out the classroom. And so having that conversation to say what people are not thinking about. And as a teacher, I didn't talk for more than 30 minutes Mm -hmm. in a 90 minute class. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about it is I know for me, the structure that we had early in the pandemic um, that, you know, transitioned back out of teaching, but taught at when the pandemic first started for high school, we only did 30 minute Google sessions. Mm -hmm. And so I think they feel like on an elementary school level that they need to be on the screen, elementary and middle, uh, preferably on the screen longer. But the reality of it is if you're in a classroom and I've, I mean, I can't say I've done middle school, I've done early childhood, you know, um, preschool, daycare, I've done middle school and high school. But who talks for an hour on, you know, Zoom? I mean, as adults, we're conking out after 15, 30 minutes on a Zoom meeting. And so how do we expect the students to sit on, on, you know, on this class, on this virtual classroom, on Zoom, listen to the teacher, tell people turn their cameras on and off, uh, you know, listen to whatever may be going on in some of their households and then get off of there, do the assignments. Yeah. It's a lot. It's it is not lot. something that. Yeah. And it's not about them having technolo- technology. We think they techie kids. Right. Because they 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 came right. out with phones and computers. Right. But mm-hmm. being technical and knowing how to use social media is not the same thing of being prepared yeah. to be online and vibrant, okay. right? You know, I heard it was 210 minutes, right? So Baltimore City, which is following guidelines from the state of Maryland, Department of Education, right? It's state of Maryland wants the students in the state, anywhere, Howard County, Montgomery County, to be uh, in front of the screen, have screen time for 210 minutes a day. That's absurd to me, right? And it's not realistic because it doesn't matter that some of those are breakout rooms and it doesn't matter that we're switching teachers and it doesn't matter that sometimes they're up. I got a seven year old, so some of his stuff is up and jumping and running in front of it. And like all of that is cool, 
but it doesn't negate the fact that I'm still in my grandma basement all day. I'm still at the dining room table all day and I'm looking at a seven inch LED screen. So it don't matter that it looks like it's swapping out. I'm looking at the same screen at the same distance. This whole time. And I, what I encourage, at least in my home, and I would love to all of us to figure out ways to retrofit where it's comfortable, right? Everybody has their respective mm-hmm. comfort levels with this whole situation we're dealing with, is there are guidelines on how to be socially responsible. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we opt to do to about within the most restrictive of those guidelines and don't afford us ourselves sometimes the flexibility that it could be this. You know, I was teaching, um, Tori, I, I taught college for a long time. I taught public speaking, right? And uh-huh. without fail, every semester, I would have a student that would come up to me. And hey, Mr. Burris, you know, I got to submit a couple of assignments and I know I missed such and such over the semester, you know, and I pull up there, we sit in front of the laptop, I pull it up, they got a 92, right? And they was like, okay, well, I'm a, I'm a, I got to do these four things and I'm going to bring it up. And so if they do those four things, it's going to bring the overall average up to a 97. But you want to know the crazy thing? If they get it up to a 97 on a transcript, it's going to be an A. But if they if left it at a 92, it was still an it's A. Be an A. Come on. You better preach. Oh. You know, I, I like a good sermon now. There's a word. There's a word in that. There's a word in that. Word in that. Like, I hear you. Right? I hear you. But what are we actually accomplishing? And so if the guidelines allows us socially responsible measures and actions that we can take and we restrict ourselves beyond what's even required, that just impedes a quality of life. That don't really do nothing. Right. And so if we could, in fact, help people, help our children, help each other expand a little bit in this new situation that we're living with. Again, it looks different for everybody. Everybody don't live in the type of neighborhood that affords that. Everybody, and it's getting cold, right? So I'm not trying to act like, oh, just go outside in the grass and frolic. Like, you know what I mean? But still within measure, there's ways to do some things. And it takes a little bit of kind of like relaxing. And if we can come together and support each other in that, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be so there was an 11 year old in California in mm-hmm. San Joaquin, California, who committed suicide oh in, uh, during his Zoom class. Oh, my. So he turned his camera off. He turned his mic off and he committed suicide. His sister oh heard the gun go off. She's in her class in the next room. Sister comes in, sees little Aiden laying, um, bleeding with uh, trauma to his head and they rush him to the hospital where he dies. It just happened, I posted it on um, my Facebook maybe three or four days ago. Oh my I immediately went to my 12 year old. Yeah. My 12 year old just turned 12 on the 23rd of November. Yeah. Um, he is an extremely intelligent but also mm-hmm. extremely sensitive child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And said to him, if you feel yeah. that you are going to break, I would rather you take a break. Take a break. I would rather you come in here. I would rather you sit in here with me. Today, I don't care about cold, heat, hot, whatever. Right. We worked on the porch. I like because that. The, even the topic of, um, or our balcony, I should say, whatever. But we, um, the topic is apathy versus uh feeling apathetic versus feeling aspired or inspired. Mm. And that type of situation, mm. what do you think a parent could do, could yeah. have done? Yeah. I'm going to toss it back to you, Rodney. What do you think could have been done for this child to feel like he had an outlet other than suicide during this Zoom and virtual learning? You know what? So to that point, Kiana, um, Kiana Tori, y'all the same. We're the same person, right? Um, <laughs> they only call us Tiana anyway. Right. So. Tiana. Y'all, Tiana. Um, I'm a, can, I, can I parallel it to hit right what you're talking about? Um so my wife gonna beat me up for saying this, right? When I was in college, I I lived in Italy for a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and I was so mad with her before I left that when I got to Italy, I broke up with her. I was like, Bruh. and I wrote this. This wasn't my better moment. Don't judge me, Tiana. Don't judge me, both of y'all. Um, but I wrote this letter, and I was like, yeah. And another thing, and the other stuff about it. And this was before we was married. I was in college, right? Um, I wrote that letter and I sent it off. Now, 
this is like old one, right? So it took like three weeks. I don't know how long it takes to go from Italy to Baltimore now, right? But it took about three weeks. Well, I sent the letter and about a week and a half, she calls me. So the letter ain't got there yet. She calls me and she was like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, I, I was free. I had delivered my soul, hear me? I was good. I was good. I was like, hey, what's, what's good with you? What's up? <laughs> And she was like, I'm just checking in because I don't know if things feel different. I'm like, what you talking about? I'm like, did you get a you get mail yet? She was like, no, I ain't in the mail yet. I'm just, you know, just kind of how you doing? And I'm trying to like beat it because I don't want to say what I wrote. I want her to get it and feel it. I wrote big letters. I use a lot of ink. Like I like feel that. Feel them squigglies and I'm like, I need you to feel that. And she, <laughs> She was like, yeah, no, yeah. And she said this, and this is what I'm talking about with the little boy in California. She said, I don't know. I just feel distant from you. And it made me like, oh. And I was like, girl, it's an ocean between us. What you, what you, what you talking about? Like, what you, what you mean? But I knew what she meant. I knew what she meant. Because without a letter ever having come there, that connection between us that people have when they have a bond. She felt it. it. She was like, I feel distant. I feel it's like something. And I was like, yeah, no, yeah, okay, let's talk later, okay, okay. Right? <laughs> Clearly, you see what happened. <laughs> you married her. Nah, right? Y'all started having all them babies. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. 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 Where each other's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, the good book talks about being in touch with the infirmities of our brothers, right? Mm -hmm. That we got somebody that knows how to feel where we at, that knows all of those steps that we went through. And sometimes some people that we live share space with, talk to all the time, all that kind of stuff. This mirror called COVID is reflecting mm -hmm. back to us that some of them bonds ain't really there. Some of those mm -hmm. smoke and mirrors. And so mm -hmm. if we're in a place where I'm not feeling you, I don't mm -hmm. know that, but we think we do. Now, Eric Holmes jumping in there, good brother. Um, it, 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 this right here is showing that, right? This is showing yeah. that. So how do we do it? Like, how do you build rapport? Yeah. It, I, I, I'm not trying to just prescribe like the formula, like A plus B equals C. It's, it's not like that, but it starts with the heart of intention. Mm -hmm. And my son, that's why I'm talking about the same boy again, the same boy who just kind of checked out, just checked out of school. He was real mad at me before this quarantine happened. He was mad at me. I put him in something. I took him out of something else. He didn't understand he was real mad, right? There was a period over the summer where me and him laid on the floor on our little hardwood floors and wrote on a paper something that was important to him. And when I tell you, Tiana, now it's sticking for the record. And I hope- Now we're gonna be Tiana, okay. Tiana. Right, I'm just laughing at <laughs> You made it easy for him. Tiana. <laughs> People gonna be like, Tiana, it's a Torian. Both of them. The bond that started. We need a hashtag. I'm sorry, Ronnie. I know that this is a serious moment, but the marketing hashtag, hashtag Tiana and then hashtag get connected. And then so we can be equitable, we're gonna hashtag Corey. So it's K-O-R-I, because people always think that I try to go first. I don't. I don't need to be first. So we'll have hashtag Corey and Tiana shirts. I was gonna confuse everybody. Corey Tiana Tori. I like that though. I like that. Though. Like it too. Y'all so anyway, make a million over there. Buy me a cheeseburger, right? But y'all make y'all you merchandise. Just I like double cheeseburgers for the record. It'll be a crab cake. We're, we're trying to help. I love that. Right. I love that. Um, anyway, <laughs> but so anyway, you and your son were on the floor. You wrote something important. important. We wrote out. He's really into workout. He's a boxer. He gets a little gym at Park Heights and all this other kind of stuff. And we worked mapped out like a workout schedule for him. Right. And what that looks like and getting up. And he was like, well, dad, you should be my trainer. And when I tell you, Corey, that I was so, um, I was so scared. You are so on point. Right? He's just so, you, well, I can't even every, get into it. Everything they say about you is true. Like, I, was, I was so scared. 
to be his trainer. I do work out. I run around Montebello when it's cold in the morning. Me and all the old people be out there. And you know who else be out there? Braxton's, um, you know all the Braxton's girls? What's the girl's name? What's the singing girl's name? Braxton. Tony and Tony and Their dad. Their dad be out there walking around Montebello, man. So my wife done made me watch the little reality shows a couple times. I done seen I was like, what's up, Mr. Braxton? What's up, Mr. Braxton? He was like, hey, uh, pork chop be out there. The people be out there. So listen. But, well, pork uh, chop moved now. So you ain't gonna, if you see pork chop out there, you might want to ask God, where are you really? Like, wait, did I tell a pork <laughs> Put us in California now or somewhere, I think. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like maybe yeah. two or three weeks ago. I do want to yeah. point out, thank you, David Gibson, for tuning in and, and chiming in. Um, he says, I am not a social butterfly, but I did but I did not telework prior mm -hmm. because I still need to be around people every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine how a child that has lost that outlet for so long must feel. And so mm -hmm. if and I thank that you, David, so thank real. you so much. And if you think about it, most of us, I know I'm of the um, old school adage, get out, out my house, go outside. You know, it's an adage, right? <laughs> go outside somewhere. I'm of the old school adage of go outside somewhere. Right. And so now when parts of outside are closed and mm -hmm. sending my child outside may also mean exposing him to COVID. Correct. It looks completely different. And so for any parent who's listening, any person who's listening, any student who's listening, who feels uninspired, if you could tell them anything. So I heard you say, build start at the heart, heart. Start build the heart. good relationships. What build else could we tell them to do so that they don't lose it? So, they don't so mm -hmm. today, I listen, I have talked about my wife and my one son so much today. And I, I kind of, whatever, it is what it is. It's y'all, right? Whatever. She went couponing today for a lot, a big part of the day, right? A big now. She's a rule scholar. I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever. Don't wear no tie. Live your best life. You know, she's like the crosswalk is for crossing and you must wait 3.5 seconds and such and such. And I'm like, stop. Let, put the coupons down. Just get the thing. Right. So is she a Libra? I don't know. This, I, she got a lot of kids. Listen, she got a lot of kids. <laughs> I do my best. I listen. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. He just did. One of the <laughs> most seven people in this house. But my point is that <laughs> she got overwhelmed. She got some news today and it took her out, right? It mm. overwhelmed her. And she did something that's atypical to her character. And I'm sharing her story for us who may need permission or at least an example to do something that I wouldn't normally do. She don't leave the work laptop in the middle of the day. Nine to five to her means nine to five still, right? She left. She went to CVS for a good bit, came back, dropped some stuff off, and went back out. And I gave her a whole like little kudos, little party about it later. I was like, man, I'm real proud of you because I know you. You're a rules follower. And she was like, I felt bad because... Bless her little heart. She was like, I felt bad because I was gone for so much in the middle of the day. But if we don't do the stuff now, couponing would drive me crazy. You hear me? That's not self-care. That's torture. But if your thing is going to the lake or walking outside or whatever it is, whether people agree with it or not, I'm not saying harm yourself. But what I'm saying is that we have to be intentional because you can only give what you have. You no know, matter how much you want to love on somebody or help them, you don't got five dollars in your pocket. You can't give them five bucks. Mm -hmm. If you don't got self care on the inside, you can't help somebody tap into it for themselves. No matter if it's your grandma, your kid, or whomever. So you got to mm -hmm. store that up, and that's being intentional about it for yourself. Can I quote one more time out the good book? Please. Love the Lord with everything you got, right? Heart, mind, body, soul, all that good stuff. Number two, love them as equal to you love yourself. So if I don't love myself, how the heck? I'm going to show you God's love. But for me, I don't sleep when I'm tired. I don't eat when I'm supposed to. I don't take care of myself. My hair, I'm raggedy, my such and such. My, my feet always hurting. My this and this and that. Like, I don't love me. I don't love on me. I don't hug me. I don't let me get a breather. Because if I don't do, I got to do. I got to do. I got to do. That's what I got in my bucket. So now that's why I can't get nobody no break. 
That's why I'm always disappointed with everybody. That's why nobody ever measure up, because I don't measure up. I don't That's good. Know. So That's taking good. the time to be intentional with us so we have something to give is where I would say we should start. That's why I'm trying to start. Well, that is definitely a reminder and confirmation for Tiana and Corey. <laughs> for both Tori and I, I know. And um, I think the good thing about, you know, having, you know, this as a partnership, we do out, we have our own things that we do. Yeah. Um, of course, I know people think that we're together 24 seven and our whole life is the Connected Corn and Behalf Connected group, but we actually do have our individual businesses, you know, our individual work, our individual clients. Uh -huh. And so even in having the partnership that we have, it does help to say, I check on, on her and say, I, you know, I know you got this stuff to do for Baltimore City and you're doing this and you're doing that, but I stay on her. I'll be like, girl, mute, turn the phone off, take five seconds. Don't let those people drive you crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, and then I, she has to tell me back because we don't listen to our own advice. <laughs> We listen to each other advice, right? And so part of what you're saying when we say working together yeah. is get that accountability partner. Get the accountability partner no. to make you accountable to take care of yourself. Yeah. Like we have accountability partners for business and yeah. for school and study groups and study partners and business partners. Get that person that's going to hold you accountable for taking care of yourself. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I heard... Um, uh, I had a foster parent, one of my mm -hmm. students, a foster parent, and she's um, very much older than this, the student. And so it has not been my experience to see people in their 60s and 70s adopt non-family members. So that just yeah. hasn't been my experience. So this is someone who adopted a child who was completely wow. not related to her. And that wow. child is her child. Wow. And she said to me um, the other day, I was on a wellness call and she said, you know, Black people, we're the only people who will put a prison inside a prison and refine prison. Mm. And I thought about that. And the thing has just been playing back in my mind and playing back in my mind and playing back in my mind. And when she was talking about the, in correlation to the social, emotional needs and deficiencies in her child, mm. I took that and I said to her, and don't make this virtual learning a prison. Ooh. Don't make yeah. it a prison. And so to use kind of her words, and I hate to say against her, yeah, but yeah, 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 against yeah. Her, right? So that she could then mm -hmm. have a level of empathy for this child, right? Because you're talking about multi-generational. You're talking about a parent who is 53 years older than her child, mm -hmm. who normally would be seen as more of a grandparent figure, right? Mm -hmm. Don't then make virtual learning a prison. You pointed out earlier, Rodney, mm -hmm. that we go to the extremes at times when there are boundaries placed. Yeah. And I think that honestly, you know, we are all dealing with post-traumatic uh, slave disorder, you know, from Absolutely. being, all you know, all of us traumatized from slavery. We have to govern ourselves harder. Yeah. I feel that um, even me and I, and I am so grateful for Tiana and Corey and the, us both. I don't know who, when I'm talking about her, who she is, but her, the other one of us. Corey and Tiana, right, yeah. Corey and Tiana. I'm grateful for my, my business partner, who is also my cousin, who is also my senior, because she does see me at times pulling my eyebrows out and yeah. she's lived through this stage of life, right? She's lived through having younger children, school yeah. age kids. And that's yeah. so even from her, her experiences, she's able to hold me accountable, but also kind of help me figure out like, what are the main things? Yeah. Um, when I used to teach in the federal government, we talked about keeping the main things, the main things. That's so amazing. again, what are the main things? And so I'm going to bounce it back to you, Rodney. If any educator is watching, mm. should they be focused on their assessments and their scores and how they're being measured for their classrooms? What is the main thing? I'm going to tell you what they told us at CCBC. So I'm teaching at Essex. Um, mm -hmm. And before we came on, Corey, <laughs> um, they told us, they said, um, this is a year of learning and adapting for all of us. Mm -hmm. It was like, go easy on the late work. Go easy on the tough grading. Um, I'm a nice guy. I don't know if that's true. Um, I'm a good dude, but I grade tough in a college setting. But that's because I feel like I give it in a way where we can eat it, 
right? And so my I teach public speaking and communication. And so normally, I don't need you to write on a paper that volume is important. Great, show me. Like, get up here, you got two minutes. Like, use your voice or use your whisper because volume don't just mean loud, right? So I teach these things in a way, I don't just want you to put that on pen and paper. And so I can kind of be like a little bit pushing towards growth. In this semester, I have been so, especially because of them nudging us to be like, hey, 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 everybody's dealing with some stuff right now. Just kind of let it. And that was that was good for me. And so I've been intentionally using like flowery language. I'm laughing at myself because I, I listen, I have put, oh, Lord, y'all gonna, don't judge me. But if I get a paper back and it's it got the little, you know, the little, you tear the paper, I got the little frilly dillies on Oh, my goodness. oh you didn't want me to mm-hmm. grade this. Which grant, mm-hmm. right? I put big red question marks on stuff. Like, what's this circle? <laughs> my bad, right? It is just my truth, right? And so, but this time, man, I have really been intentionally looking for ways to extend grace. Mm-hmm. Extend grace because we're going to mm-hmm. get through this. And sometimes I've been trying to tell my wife, she was like, the test scores and it's such and such and such and such. And I was like, guess who else is doing online learning? The whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your kid ain't falling behind. Your kid is a is in a cohort, a generation of yeah. children that is experiencing mm-hmm. this. And so, so the difference, I think, is the politicized okay. nature, especially. Like, honestly, if I could drop kick Betsy DeVoe and not go to jail, I would take one for the team. Well, maybe even a little jail. Right? <laughs> You're willing to do a little bit, right? Bit like, bit. Like, like something that I'm familiar with, like um, the bookings. Like if right, I went to right, right, right. booking, right? Because the cockroaches are gone. You know, I would maybe take one for the thing. Anyway, I digress. I envision you keeping her frequently. Yeah. So, uh, so when there is an intersection between <clears throat> education, yeah. funding, and politics. Yeah. And that is a lot of the pressure. Even, you know, myself, I have been unraveling because I have a professional opinion about what should happen, yeah. um, how I'm supposed to appear to the world. I'm supposed yeah. to appear to the world, to my my teams and the principals and the parents and teachers as someone who is focused on grades, attendance, behavior, yeah. performance. And if you are logging in and how, you know, what these numbers say and all. But my personal opinion, the human of me, I want my students to build themselves. Yeah, I want you to be whole. I want you to be healthy. And so Mm -hmm. I am unraveling because I am in a place where those two identities cannot coexist. And so I am an Aquarius. I only have one child, so I can remember my birthday. I'm an Aquarius. (laughs) I'm a humanitarian. I am a servant of people. Mm -hmm. And most of all, I am going to stand for what is right. And so Kiana has been helping me with this because there are some days that I am so angry. I'm so angry and I refuse to push a narrative that is funded or founded on political principles, on where funding is coming from, on whose charter is going to be whatever. But that is what leads oftentimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, our children are in the same cohort globally, but Norway is not having the same concerns. You understand China is not having the same concerns. So one of those differences that I've seen too, like to your point about what do we say to the educators, when you were just talking, you made me think of food. And so I might be hungry. Okay, forgive me, right? (laughs) Oh, I look like a drumstick. Do I look like a drumstick? I just want to make sure I don't look like a drumstick. You look like a drumstick. So I'm going to be hungry. Do I look like herbs and food? You know when you're real hungry? When When you are very hungry, and you see somebody getting some food, and it's especially if it's something that you like, you like, I mean, other people, you that right? Because we be looking, we be, like, how much you gonna put? Okay, I mean, whatever. No, I take it. Nobody want that, right? Get an attitude about it. Now, let us be full. Let us be full. It could be the thing that we love. And you better go in there and get you some of that. I'm telling you, that thing good. You, know what I'm like, you get you some, we want to share it. If we are putting our educators in a position where they can't tap into wholeness, into wellness, mm. into emotional, but we're passing over them and telling them to provide it for the students, they can't. They can't. 
the airplane, the mass drop down, what they say. You better, put it on earth. you better. And it sounds so selfish, but you're not going to be in a position to serve anybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't do that. Right. And so at a certain level, we I know it's important and children are the future. Sister Whitney done told us our whole life that they're the future, right? Yes, that's true. Hey, that was my fifth grade graduation song. Yes. Did you did she sing it? I'm doing the two step, right? She was and I could actually sing back then. I don't know how I would sound now, but you could not. <laughs> I could sing in fifth grade. I was on a choir. I was on a choir in fifth grade. I could sing. Can you ever try to perform in fifth grade? So listen, guys, if you are catching this on the replay, (laughs) drop the comments below. Be sure to follow us at the Connected Corner. Smash like and love. Follow us on YouTube. When the other Tiana starts fibbing, I have to just... Listen, she was reminding me of Eddie King. Like, I still got the box. I still got Eddie King. Want to hit, hit, go. Want to hit, hit, go. I'm not even going to hurt y'all like that right now. But I, I was about to I was about to kick it in. Children oh, are and I would have figured out how to. No, uh-uh. please don't. That's not. It's not an emotion. <laughs> no, Tori, you didn't want to hear We want, we want no, no, no. people to stay with us. We want them to, to, <laughs> to finish watching to the end. Tori, my mama's middle name is Rose. Oh, awesome. That's my last name. I see. <laughs> but it's still Rose, right? And so when I was little... I didn't know my mama. I lived with her, but trauma manifests in different ways. My mama left us, she was there. And if mm-hmm. she's gonna beat me up so bad. But emotionally, and we we know this, this is common stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. To preserve and protect and keep us going, she emotionally detached, right? Mm-hmm. So I grew up with Sister Sharon. I didn't grow up with my mom, I grew up with Sister Sharon. Sister Sharon's a different lady. Now, me and my two sisters, my sister's got a lot of kids too. I don't know what these, these look, Kiana, these people need something else to do with themselves, for real, for real. <laughs> but my, my my mother has 13, 14 grandkids, something like that. Wow. She has a whole lot of kids. Like my wife didn't contribute half of them by herself, bless her heart, right? And then the other two sisters. And so <laughs> my kids experienced Grandma Rose. I, don't, I never got to know no Grandma Rose. I, that lady wasn't around. Right. And so Grandma Rose is such a lovely, loving person. And she's so warm and fun. And I'm like, y'all tripping. I'm like, Mama. And she's like, no, they can jump on a bed. I'm like, yo, you're you're tripping. Right. <laughs> but what my mom has, is doing so well now is she's teaching them how to love themselves. And so it, it's a human thing. It's not a child thing. It's not a student thing. It's like no matter where at stage I'm at, if I'm 40, 50, if I'm X this, X that, the form of this, form of that, still this, still that. If you help me realize that I don't have to look for love, look for warmness, look for care outside of myself, even if that outside of myself is my best friend, right? It don't have to be nothing crazy. It could be I need my best friend because we know people. That if you my friend and you spending time with somebody else and that's your best friend, oh, oh I see how it is. It's still unhealthy because we had to talk people how to fill their own hole in their bucket, right? Everything that goes in, come right out. And so I think for the educators, just to close that loop, if we can help them realize that it's also okay for them to take care of self, then they'll see the value and have the space and the wherewithal to help their students do so. And it's a ripple effect in that way. That's good. Wow. That's very good. Well, I think that's is. I mean, that kind of wraps it up. Uh, absolutely, to just kind of like you said, close that in, and that we definitely, the teachers, the educators, those that are responsible for that, to take care of their self, to make sure they're whole, to love themselves, in order for them to pour into the children, the students, because students are. They're getting wore out. They're not feeling inspired. You got some that's, you know, they don't know whether to make plans for the future or not. Are they graduating? Are they not? Are they are they going to be prepared? You know, especially when you talk about your juniors and seniors, are they going to be prepared for the next level? And so um, all of those tips and things um, that you gave us tonight and we want people Mm -hmm. to, you know, listen to it again, go back, play it over Mm -hmm. um, so you can Mm -hmm. hear the information um, and get, you know, this really good sound during this time that can help push you through, you know, to get inspired um, during this time, because, you know, like you said, the children are our future. 
So tell us where we can find you, Rodney. Before Rodney does Mm -hmm. that, can I I add one thing? Like to tell us where we can find you kind of wraps it up for us. So I thought (laughs) of a shout out. Um, Samuel Walker is playing with a purpose. He has an SAT boot camp. And so for anyone who is looking, um, that is a resource that I'm able to bring to my school and my students, and I'm excited about it. But he, you can look him up, um, playingwiththepurpose.com. If your child is 10th, 11th, 12th grade, um, we know that some schools are going to negate the SATs this year, but some may not. If you feel like your child needs some additional coaching, please check out Mr. Samuel Walker with Playing With the Purpose uh, SAT Boot Camp. Another thing to parents, yeah. and I want to continue to say this, if your child is not ready, yeah. if your child is not ready, and my boss just got home, I'm sorry, so if y'all hear the whine and the crying in the background, I got a 7.5 month old boss in the oh, background. Wow. If your child is not ready, Mm -hmm. do not allow the school system, do not allow the teachers, the principals, or anyone Mm -hmm. to push your child forward. If you especially cannot afford a tutor during this COVID time where things are discounted and it's virtual and they they show up right on your computer screen. If you cannot afford a tutor at this time, Understand you will not be able to afford a tutor next year or the following year and that you will be compounding the trauma and the unpreparedness, if that's a word, of your time. That's a word. Do not push your child forward. I don't even at this point, I don't even care if they say, Tori, that's against your contract, Baltimore City. Listen, it's not against my contract with Jesus. Come on. Because I am telling you that these children are not learning. And it is not a, a, a shot at the system. It's not a shot at the, the, the um, it is the condition and it is the apathy. And you are right. There mm-hmm. are some kids who tried their best and disconnected. Yeah. And there yeah. are some kids from day one said, that's not for me not because of their experience from March to May. Right. They did and that. And so they did that part. And so guys, parents, teachers, educators, Again, it is not a unilateral issue. It's not just um, it's not just because your your kid, you know, I want you to tell your school to fail your kid. That's not what I'm saying. Right. It's not a district issue. This is a human issue and common sense issue. So that's it. I'm off my hours. Thank you. My um, that, was, that was worth adding. Absolutely. Um, I agree with that. Um, because I don't think people know where their kids are right now or how to assess where they are. So I think that was important to add for everybody. And so now, Rodney, yes. you want to tell us where we can find you? Yes, right here. So I want to do something nice. <laughs> um I and I'm I'm gonna say this humbly, but I'm gonna say it confidently. I make a lot of money doing what I do now, right? I make a lot of money doing what I do. I made six figures last year. I'm very proud of that, uh, completely on my own. I have not always made six figures as an entrepreneur, right? But last year I did way above and I went to the car dealership and put cash on the table and walked out with a vehicle, right? I know that's why I'm saying this. I started off by saying I want to do something nice. I'm now at the point where I can have a, a big top dollar to come in and work with teams and staff and management and all that stuff. We need hugs right now. Mm-hmm. Right? We need hugs. So if your people, Corey, Tiana, um, connect with you over any of your stuff and would love to connect with me, right? I want to do a session that's just just us. Them, me, them, their, if it's family, if it's the work group, if it's the church group, like what, whatever it is, right? If we need to Zoom, if we need to meet out the park and stand ten feet apart, whatever that looks like or feel like, as we get, like we not in this, we not in a space right now to be like, well, you know, let's get the whole invoice. That's I'm not worrying about that right now because what we're gonna do when we lose all of us, then what the paper paper gonna do, right? It ain't gonna do nothing. So, um, thank you, Carl Jackson, Mr. Carl Jackson. Thank um, you, Delegate Carl Jackson. Delegate, delegate Carl Jackson. No, day. <laughs> we appreciate you. So it's much. Rodney C. Burris everywhere. It's Rodney C. Burris mm-hmm. Instagram. It's Rodney C. Burris YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, it's Rodney C. Burris at Gmail. It's info at Rodney C. Burris. It's Rodney C. Burris.com, right? It's right. That's, that's me. And if 
your people mention you guys or if they come through you, I it would be my honor to share space, to share best practices, to hear and listen, to hug as virtually as we can so that we can all be better. I'm gonna end with this quote. John F. Kennedy says, when the tide comes in, all the ships in the harbor raise. Mm. It's not a limited resource. If we win, then we all win. And I want to be with us. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We would love to have you back. We appreciate you. We've also dropped how you can connect with us at Tori Rose, the connector at Kiana B. Jones. Um, we appreciate you, Rodney. You will definitely hear from us again. And we are proud to be connected. This is the Connected Corner where you get news and resources you can actually use. And I think tonight uh, our guests are going to, I mean, our viewers will agree that they got news and resources they can actually use. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kiana, I'm going to toss it to you. All right. And so what we want to do um, tonight in lieu of our conversation about education and advocacy for youth, um, we want to take a moment of silence um, for our family member, our friend, our brother, Antoine Ball, not better known and also known as Busta, who was a essential educator and advocate for all youth. And I'm going to stop talking and we're going to take this moment of silence. So thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. We thank you for coming with us to the Connected Corner. Uh, make sure you watch us every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and watch it on a replay, comment, like, let us know what you thought about the show and make sure you subscribe for our YouTube. God bless and good night. Thank you again, Rodney. Thank you. <laughs>